Hi folks, so we're going to go over some important terminology around when we have a security uh, detection of an event happening and the accuracy of that detection. Um, and so specifically around intrusion detection systems, like IDS systems, and when it generates an alert, whether or not it's accurate. Um, and this same terminology would apply in basically exactly the same way uh, if you're talking about malware detection. Like antivirus software, um, we'll use essentially the same terminology. Um, this is one of those things where once it clicks, it'll seem really simple and straightforward, but when you first hear this terminology, it can be a bit confusing. So we'll kind of step through it, and make sense of it. <clears throat> so a true positive is when you've detected an attack. So you've successfully there was a successful attack on the network and. Your IDS has successfully generated an alert on that attack, then that is a true positive. So there is a positive, so there was an alert, and it is true in that it was accurate. A false positive is where you've got a false alert. So there's an alert that's been generated, like that's the positive part of it, but it was wrong, so it's false. So uh, it's basically telling you the wrong thing. It's also uh, an example of a type 1 error. So a true negative is where, um, so negative means there was no alert uh, and true means that it was accurate. So there truly was nothing to worry about. Nothing happened and nothing was reported. So it's fine. We can not being bothered. A false negative is where there was an attack but it was missed. So there was the, the um, negative part of, um, is because there was um, no alert generated and the false is that that was wrong in that uh, there was, a, there should have been an alert um, generated. So yeah, you've missed something and that's a type 2 error. So if we um, think about IDS systems in terms of accuracy, we could describe detection as being a classification task. And so if we want to know the accuracy of that classification, uh, we need to have some ground truth. So if we want to like measure the accuracy of some an IDS system, we need to know, uh, you know the truth of whether or not it was an attack uh, so that we can then measure the accuracy. But unfortunately, generating data sets um, that have labels, like for supervised learning and machine learning, for example, um, or in order to, so that we can measure the accuracy after the fact of an IDS system, is quite difficult. So there's a popular data set, which is a Lincoln Lab KDD data set. It's, you know, it's been used in um, quite a bit of research, but actually it's, it's very flawed um, because you know, they generated it in different ways for the malicious and the benign traffic. So there are um, other differences between, within that data set, the differences between the um, attacks and the non-attack part of that data set, they differ in ways that aren't related to whether or not it was an attack. So for example, the time to live on those packets was different. Which means that if you are trying to um, use them for machine learning to generate a rule set, for example, it will, um, you know, create um, models that will interpret, you know, time to live as being important, but actually it's not. So, if you are trying to validate a IDS system, there are two common measures um, of success for an IDS system. And that's the precision, um, so that's the percentage of real alerts within the alerts that are generated. So you can calculate that with true positive divided by uh, um, true positive uh, added to the false positives. And that just gives you the ratio of the real alerts within all the alerts you got. Or there's recall, which is the true positive divided by the true positive and the false negative, which gives you a percentage of the real alerts versus the completeness of the ground truth. So if you're missing uh, real attacks, uh, that will also 
uh, impact or be shown by the, the outcome. So there's um, something known as the base rate fallacy, which is relevant for um, thinking about IDS systems. And um, I'm going to read a quote from this uh, paper that describes why base rate, the base rate fallacy is relevant for IDS systems and the reference that comes at the end. The base rate fallacy is best described through example. Suppose that your doctor performs a test that's 99% accurate. That is, when the test was administered to, to a test population, all of whom had the disease, 99% of the tests indicated disease. And likewise, when the test population was known to be 100% free of the disease, 99% of the test results were negative. Upon visiting your doctor to learn the results, he tells you, here's some good news and bad news. The good news is that indeed you tested positive for the disease. Sorry, the bad news is you tested positive for the disease. The good news, however, is that out of the entire population, the rate of incidence is only 1 out of 10,000. That is, only 1 in 10,000 people have this ailment. What, given this information, is the probability of your having the disease? The reader is encouraged to make a quick guesstimate of the answer at this point. So, you know, you've been told the test says that you do have the disease and it's 99% accurate. Uh, and also that there's only one in every 10,000 people has it. So even though the test is 99% certain, your chance of actually having the disease is only one in 100 because the population of healthy people is much larger than the population with the disease. So it's this phenomenon that humans in general do not take the basic rate of incident, the base rate, into account when intuitively solving such problems of probability that's aptly named the base rate fallacy. Um, and, uh, you know, in that um, paper um, by Stefan um, Axelson, uh, year 2000, base rate fallacy and the difficulty of intrusion detection, um, they summarise that um, there is many more benign events than attacks uh, and the detection is, is not 100% reliable and therefore the reliability versus the low base rate can mean that many detections will be false positives. Um, and therefore, it, in order to um, have an IDS system that works, a false alarm rate is the limiting factor for the performance of an intrusion detection system. So you need to have an intrusion detection system as a very low false, um, false alarm rate. Um, so, and based on their um, reckoning, there are many types of anomaly-based IDS that have a long way to go um, in terms of actually being useful. So, you know, based on that, we might say that it's an argument in terms of signature-based detection which in general will be more, um, depending on how the rules are written, can be more accurate um, to any detect attacks, but that still has all the problems that we discussed with signature-based detection in that it misses new attacks and um, you, you know it's often easy to um, circumvent a signature-based detection by changing the specifics of the attack.